We were told the game was over before we'd even started. We were told our bodies weren't made for it. It wasn't our time to play. We played anyway. And together we played like there was no tomorrow. And they told us that was fine. You can play. You're good enough. And thought that was good enough for us. It wasn't. We are relentless. The game isn't over until we say it's over. Until we get everything we've given everything for. Until we level the playing field. Lidl, proud supporters of ladies Gaelic football. We were told the game was over before we'd even started. We were told our bodies weren't made for it. It wasn't our time to play. We played anyway. And together we played like there was no tomorrow. And they told us that was fine. You can play. You're good enough. And thought that was good enough for us. It wasn't. We are relentless. The game isn't over until we say it's over. Until we get everything we've given everything for. Until we level the playing field. Lidl, proud supporters of ladies Gaelic football. You still haven't gone full Lidl. Go on, make big savings like this lot. Peanuts. Excuse me? I don't like them. Peanuts. Once again? Peanuts. They're vegan. Peanuts. Yeah. I like, I like prawns, but I heard you cook them. Oh, there's loads of ways. Can we go them? No. Join in and go full Lidl this year. Did you get milk? Shop without compromise and pay less. Welcome to Dona St. Patrick's, the home of the St. Patrick's Club here in Fermanagh. Conditions are absolutely perfect for the visit of London against Fermanagh here in the Little National Football League Division 4 clash. It's a big game for Fermanagh. They know they need to get the result this afternoon if they're to have any hope of progressing to the knockout stages of Division 4. And they will also be waiting on the result between Antrim and Carlo later on. I'm delighted to say Chris Moore, the, the, the Fermanagh 
minor manager joins us this afternoon. There's no doubt, and Chris, this is a massive game for Fermanagh. They will have to come out of the blocks in this one. And against the London side, it's hard to know what way they are. Yeah, look, if, you, if you're going on uh, previous results in the last few weeks... Just pull that mic up closely. That's perfect. Yeah, if you're going on previous results the last few weeks, you'd favour Fermanagh. But it's, as I said before, it's the whole unknown of London at the moment. The last two or three games against Fermanagh have been extremely tight, so it should be a good encounter. Fermanagh's going to have to be on their game. Absolutely. Well, London, of course, are just basically playing for pride this afternoon. Their manager uh, was talking to their Patrick Bowles, along with Dave Byrne and Bernard Bino Collins from Clare. We were just talking there before the game. He's delighted to be here. They're focused very much on the championship. They've a few injuries. Josephine Quinn, perhaps one of the more notable ones from last year uh, on the, the full back line. But they have a strong enough side. We'll look at it in a moment. Fermanagh come into the game, of course, with a, a loss against Antrim and a victory against Carlo and that head the head against Carroll could be a very interesting one should things work out this afternoon. We will start with the Fermanagh lineup, and it is a familiar goalkeeper, Roisin Gleeson. Emer Keenan at two, Molly McGloin at three, and Ashley O'Brien at four, with Shannon McQuaid, captain of Fornia, at number five from the Temple Maguire's Club. Courtney Murphy, the former captain from Canoli, she's at number six, and Sarah Jane Flanagan from Adram C, just up the road there at number seven. Brenda Bannon and Roisin O'Reilly are in the middle of the park with Sarah Britton, Danielle McGuire and Ashley McGuire, while on the full forward line is Clina Martin, Laura Grew and Neve McManus. A lot of experience there, a lot of the scores coming from uh, Roshan O'Reilly and Danielle McGuire this year, and her sister of course back in the squad again, Lisa, and also Blahin Bogue is also named in the subs, whether or not she's fit or not remains to be seen. Chris? Well, if, you, if you're going by the way she's warming up there, she's going to be ready for it. She's, uh, she's running around there like there's no injuries there. Uh, Paddy at the moment she had picked up a shoulder knock of course in one of their early rounds of the National League a reduced National League of course for the Division 4 sides and both managers James Daly from uh, Fermanagh and Kiva Morgan from Fermanagh who's a regular here with us here on the TV coverage of her games in the Lidl National League and Patrick Bowles of course from London not happy with the fact that the, there is a reduced programme of league games especially with the Championship not that far away. Looking at the London side then a, a side with some familiar names and players from all over Ireland of course many living and working now permanently in London it's not a case of just players turning up every year there's quite a settled look about this squad Sinead Coyle Lyons is in goals from the Round Towers Club Martha Jordan from Mayo is at number 2 and Elno O'Brien's at number 3 with Bridget Gallagher at number 4 and I would say our good friend Johnny Gardy would love to have uh, Bridget Gallagher lining out for him. Of course, she's from Leitrim. Emer Alcorn at five, Rebecca Considine at six, and Emma Clark from the Spurn Oak Club in Tyrone at number seven. Neve Daly from Fermanagh at Irvinstown, of course, just over the road. Clina Twig from Cork. And then in the full forward line, in the half forward line, is Claire O'Brien, Roshin Considine, and Lorraine Lamb with Claire Byrne. Rushing Kelly and Neve O'Brien. A mixture of counties on display this afternoon from a London side who are really here just with a pride on their mind, but no doubt thinking of the championship further ahead, Chris. Yeah, look they're 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 here for pride, but they're they're just not here just to, to say we're here to travel to Fermanagh, they're here to put it up to Fermanagh and as you said, Paddy, the, the championship around the corner, they want to try and get a bit of confidence, a bit of momentum going, so well, just across from us here in the wonderful stand at Dona, and I have to say I'm very, very impressed with the facilities here. It's a long time since I've been here, but they've really went to town. Of their facilities rebuilt, of course, after a very nasty fire a couple of years ago. Wonderful clubhouse, and the stand absolutely superb and well-appointed, of course, as well. Captain of Fornia, Cleana Tuig from Holloway Gales. She is there in the middle with the Fermanagh captain. Just getting the toss down there and getting that proceedings about to get underway. Shannon McQuaid there. I don't know who won the toss, but the referee is Chris Morgan from Down, along with his umpires from the Down, with Anya Martin and Adele Woods from Fermanagh on the line this afternoon as well. Conditions, a bit of a breeze blowing as we look out left to right, but that uh, shouldn't make much of an influence in this game because, uh, you know, this is a, it's a compact wee pitch, but it's a good pitch and good facilities underfoot absolutely perfect Chris yeah it, 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 we just talked about there at the start the the, the pitch is in fantastic uh, condition and there'll be 
there'll be a small bounce, not much, but the wind's coming and going, left to right, as you said, but can't see it playing much of an impact at the moment. Can't see that now, but uh, I have to say, very impressed with the facilities. But now, Chris, nowadays, there's very few bad grounds. No, no, nothing for Manning anyway. There's always good grounds about for Manning. And you, can, you can see the work going in by the staff at the gate and everything else. And the club, the club is just, they're moving forward with their pitch, and you can see that clearly here. And a lot of clubs in uh, Fermanagh, of course, supporting the one, a four bedroom house competition that's coming up with Club Ernia, who are also involved in supporting Lily's football. And my good friend Jared Trissy was telling me about that the other day. Tickets are £100 each, but things going well for that. It's www.wonahouseinfermanagh.com. Maybe a future old man might not want to move to Fermanagh, but anyway, that's that's another story. I'm only joking, by the way, but it's a very good draw, and there's a lot of other wee draws going on at the minute as well in the build-up to that big occasion. But there's a great bit of support for Liddy's football in the county, and a good committee working behind the scenes. Things going well, Chris, overall? It's th- things are going very well. You can see the, the drive and development squads and different things starting in Fermanagh now, and, and people are putting in the time and effort, and the ladies getting the recognition they deserve now in Fermanagh, so it's nice to see. Absolutely, and I'm sure uh, when Brewster Park becomes available again they will be back there as they are so often but uh, some great work being done and great to see James there of course the club president here of Dona haven't seen him in a long time heavily involved in ladies football for many many years but great to see him there as well as we said the referee about to blow for a minute's silence that minute's silence will be for Anthony Cannon a former player and club member here of Dona St Patrick's who sadly passed away we're just getting ready for that uh, James Daly has uh, his players in a huddle over there with Kiva Morgan and the management team and away to the right hand side uh, from Mana or, or London in their white and green away to the right hand side they're getting ready for this uh, minute silence of course as well now we'll have a Ron Vane sung this afternoon here at Dona and nice wee tidy crowd watching this one Thanks for rendition of Aaron Avian and that young man, a uh, fine singer and uh, multitasking, doing the announcements and singing himself. So I haven't seen that in a while. I haven't seen that since Oliver Gallagher, Gallagher sung down in Cavan all those years ago. <laughs> of course, Oliver, former president of uh, Ulster. Just looking out there, it's uh, interesting to see. There's a size difference in some of the players. Some of them London girls quite tall. Yeah, it's just, it's especially when they run down the the spine of the team there it's quite it's quite tall team and Fermanagh's wee bit smaller there apart from maybe Roshan O'Reilly in the middle I think it's a, it's a massive task for Fermanagh this afternoon they know the price of this one in terms of one and they have to win it first and foremost and hope they rack up a good score as well and hope obviously that are on at Antrim beat Carlo yeah well as you said if the Fermanagh have to go out first and foremost win the game but if they're winning they have to start racking up the scores if, if it comes down to score difference at the moment Paddy absolutely it will go head to head of course really, if uh, things work out but so many permutations this afternoon in the little ladies national football league division 4a and b referee is uh, about to get proceedings underway and the game's on 
and that London have the first real touch of this one with Rebecca Considine out that far side. Bagger comes to the midfielder, Neve Daly. Familiar territory for her, I would say she's played here on a few occasions on the run now. Donegal's Emer Alcorn out this right hand side. Fermanagh having to defend early on here as the ball comes to rushing Considine trying to jink away from the marker and then puts the ball over the top an opportunity here for a, an early score rushing Gleeson watches the ball come across the face of the goal it's spun she spins away and she's popped that one over the bar and that's a very very good score it was good from a London point of view it was a good pa pa patient build up there Fermanagh you can see from the kick out they went back straight away the defensive structure but London still broke through yeah, early start for them, of course, in terms of travelling. They travelled yesterday and they have a flight back uh, later on this afternoon from Dublin. So we'll be conscious of that. But uh, certainly the hospitality for them here, I'm told, will be excellent today. They might not feed them if London happened to come away with this one, though. And they're on the attack again with Constantine laying the ball off. The full forwards made a good run through the middle, rushing Kelly, but it goes the whole way back once again to... Daly puts the ball out the far side near the opportunity to just make a mark in this game perhaps tough defence needed there but uh, as London got off to the more confident start here that's for sure Tewing across a good run down this near side from uh, Alcorn as well it will come her direction now out this right hand side takes a touch looks up to see as her options on but runs into a green wall in front of her and the referee says she overcarried the ball. Maybe too keen to get the ball in the corner and then no option to get away with it. But from Anna now can uh, traverse up the park. But uh, no one up there, only one forward, two forwards. And from their point of view, it wasn't a good one. But uh, the return ball uh, equally poor as O'Reilly picks it up, puts it through the centre. O'Reilly to Maguire. Out that far side once again, trying to get rushing already away. Loose ball, three London players around her, and it comes back across then to Danielle Maguire. Out this near side, they need McManus. McManus, nice ball into the corner, trying to get a bit of movement. An opportunity here for the full forward, Laura Grew. That will be a free in, and you'd expect this one to be popped over the bar, Chris. Yeah, you, you can see rushing coming across here. She's been pretty deadly at the moment in the last two games with free kicks. Uh, so you'd expect this between the sticks it's uh, quite an open game I know it's only a couple of minutes old but it, it's quite open already both sides are, are keen to make a mark in this one yeah you can sort of see even when, when the, the ball goes if man of the ball and London are retreating back letting, inviting the pressure on and the same with Fermanagh well that one's that gone over the bar and that, that's a set on score it's a score perhaps that they, they do need rushing O'Reilly and uh, well and you've quality like that about you want to be knocking them over the bar and just uh, levelling matters here. And they take the return or the, the kick out. They've won that through the centre as well with Maguire trying to thread the ball through. But, uh, well, it looked to be a knock in the heels there. And the defence equal to the challenge and they clear their lines through the centre. But limited options for Claire O'Brien. She has to sort of run through there. That Parnell's player, long ball forward into the good ball path off at rushing Kelly. Kelly lays it back. Shot comes in into the hands of the experienced uh, Rajin Gleeson, who, of course, had retired for a spell, but uh, was lured back again. And for Manas are of need, of course. James Daly doing marvellous work with them, of course. Previously that, Johnny Gardy, our good friend. Also doing sterling work now with Leitrim too. Could be a Leitrim for Manas semi-final. That would be an interesting yeah, one for sure. Definitely interesting when at the start of the season when I seen that coming. It was... <laughs> That's a long way off yet, though, yeah. of course, for all the teams in the divisions this afternoon. But Johnny's got off to a good start. As of London here, bright movement from Rush and Kelly. Runs into trouble, though. And the loose ball easily picked up there by the experienced Shannon McQuaid, the captain of this Fermanagh side. And then they're on the run here and trying to... The uh, Londoner playing a sweeper in there as well. Back to Bannon. Bannon tries to get away from the marker. The marker there is Bridget Gallagher. And they continue to try and move the ball forward into the space for Danielle Maguire. Maguire's got players. If she looks up, to, she's got a couple of openings there. Eventually, she does get it out this right-hand side to Sarah Britton. Britton trying to get away from the marker. 
Throws well, get the pass inside of the full forward crew, but the wayward pass then is easily intercepted there by the full back, Elno Brand. Big Elno Brand, he's very tall, very, very physical, very strong, the Parnells player, and they clear their lines, but that's what they do with it now when they get over the halfway line is the key from a London point of view. And if you are watching in London this afternoon, a very good afternoon to you. It's nice to have you with us here, watching these young ladies travel and represent London in the National League, good to have them back. High ball in, and that one goes wide. Both no. sides playing some decent football, but the final passes at each side, maybe yeah, not accurate. I would even say just up there, uh, Laura Grew should have backed herself a wee bit. She was in her scoring zone, and she tried to play the ball in over the top of three players, and we lost it. If she just backed herself that wee bit more, a bit more confidence, she can, she can do damage. Well, they have the ball once again with Bannon. Striding down this left hand side, taking the return pass, and she's got support there from uh, Clodagh Martin. Or she's in space now, Clena. Nice ball. Out right, that far side again, the shot comes in from distance, and that has went wide as well. Early opportunities for both sides. Both sides missing chances, both sides a point on the board already. Goalkeeper Sinead Coyle Lyons from Round Towers, the Meath player, of course, about to hit this one out. Meath synonymous with some fine goalkeepers over the past few years. About to hit this one out. Currently plays with, as I said, round towers. Won a title last year. Ball one back round the middle, low. No one moving really for the kick out. And uh, Fermanagh can try and make a bit of hay when they pick the ball up there with uh, Ashton O'Brien. Drinking away from the marker. Got support over the 45 metre line looking up to see is there anything moving for and then the ball goes out that far side to Sarah Jane Flanagan nice ball inside but it's a wayward pass again but it has been secured and the goalkeeper the keeper drops it oh. and it's turned to the net the keeper made the mistake Laura Grew was there like all good forwards do in the right place at the right time stuck her foot out and in the net it goes yeah look it was a shot we Sarah there we thought the keeper had it comfortable made a mistake and Laura was there where she's meant to be and, and slotted away I would say you'd be telling your full forward especially at minor level and underage level always take the chance yeah look it's, it's, it's the same it's nothing more hateful when you take a shot and it drops into the keeper's hands and uncontested so it's a pet hit, I mean. A mistake for Lyons, or Coyle Lyons. And it's on this near side now with Ellen O'Brien. Despite all the good work that London had done, the mistake cost the goal, and that could open the floodgates in this one, even at this early stage. And scores are important today, as you will recall. Antrim and Carlo go head to head at 3 o'clock this afternoon, and the winners of that game, Arma Antrim, actually very well placed, of course, to progress. Two victories would certainly, or three victories would certainly see that, but as it stands, they're all but three. If, if, if Paddy of London could just uh, utilise their inside runs yeah. more, they're making the they're runs. They're making right. the runs, but yeah, they're not. It's just, there's just no even finish. that level of support, even from making the runs, there's none there. And for man, I just have to watch out in that. And they are playing the sweeper, of course, as well, yeah. and to try and nullify the threat there, but of course. Uh, it's uh, the threats coming from several forwards this afternoon, and there's a pl fine player rushing already, getting away from the marker. Long ball inside, and uh, well, Grew potentially oh. would have been the target. The challenge came in there, and that will be a free, I would imagine. I think it was more accidental than yeah. anything else. But uh, rushing, rushing, sort of dictating the game here at the moment. She is, uh, Patty, You can see there, she's she's picking the ball up, looking the link to play, and also following. So. Well, an early setback maybe for Fermanagh. I think a mouthful of water will surface at this, on this occasion. She's still down onto the challenge. Did uh, the number 15 there, that being Neve McManus from Canole. She's back up onto her feet. Free awarded, and uh, there will be an opportunity here for Russian O'Reilly to add to her tally to make it 1-1-2 one, 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 to a point as it stands 1-1 one, one to a point and already drops it short and oh. she'll not be happy with that one she just did not get the range at all drop short and London will try and build from the back here but they are struggling to get out good work from Eve Daly trying to get the ball away takes a return pass does Daly and then lays it through the centre limited opportunities up front though because it just seemed to break down when they get over the halfway line and once again they've run into trouble and it will be a free there the challenge Claire O'Brien 
over carried the ball and the referee gives the free and no point in their arguing because the referee has awarded the uh, free kick actually he hasn't he's a way to talk I would think he's a way to talk to James Daly on the far side yeah, I think James James was out in the middle of the pitch there at one stage I think he was trying to get back in so yeah he's just having a word and having a word with the, the bench he's like actually he's free actually give this to London he, had, he did signal the other way but there you are it goes this way and it's uh, London on the attack down this uh, right hand side once again with the Considine Considine out to say to Alcorn Alcorn take, puts the ball back into the mix and returns the return favour comes to her this is a slow build up but it's a patient build up daily nice ball inside Finish Prague key though for them. Back at the Considine, he's working really, really hard. They're trying to open it up a wee bit, but they're finding it yeah. difficulty to get through there. And uh, well, the return ball daily. Back out it comes again. It seemed to have a lot of players over, but the finished product. Well, it is Good there in this, yeah. this occasion from Considine. Fine score. That was a fantastic score. You can see there from Man is very disciplined in their defending, but it just takes something special sometimes like that. To to open it up and that uh, fine new scoreboard away to our right hand side as we look out there pressure on from Fermanagh to try and get the ball up the park once again Britain picks it up plenty of options for a nice pass inside to Maguire Maguire runs into trouble she will get a free for her trouble and Q rushing already perhaps again or will she leave it she wants it short and it is taken, and she takes the return down this near side. A lot of organisation trying to be done by London to try and snuff out that challenge of her, but the pass isn't a good one. Eventually it goes across to O'Reilly, no. and it's a wayward high ball. Gary Owen stayed out that far side. Still in play, though, and well yeah. done by Grew. Yeah, Laura, Laura's every, there's no dead ball with Laura Grew at the moment, the first five, ten minutes, so which is great to see. And a free award it. An opportunity for Fermanagh once again. The referee having a note of that name as well. As we said earlier on, we're at Dona in County Fermanagh this afternoon. Fine appointed ground, of course. Excellent support of ladies football over the years. Will continue to be that way. And the breeze is blown in favour of London this first half. But it is Fermanagh who have the advantage. Slotted in. And started over the bar by Danielle Maguire. Yeah, good good free kick there. Well won by Laura Grew, came from Hor chasing down the, the dead ball there. And uh, I suppose if you were management yourself, Chris, you'd be happy enough with that? Yeah, so, uh, you'd be happy with any of your forwards chasing any sort of dead ball because is there a really ball dead until it goes out? So that's it. And, and keeping the press on yeah. London as well, I think that's the key because every time they get over the 45, halfway we did say, but it's over the 45 now at the breakdown. Here's an opportunity now for them. But a carrying to be done by Claire O'Brien. Tries to thread the ball through the centre. But again, mopping up the loose ball in there is uh, Molly McGloin. And uh, move it out very quickly. O'Reilly seems to be out for everything this afternoon. It's going her way nearly every time. And again, Sir Britain takes possession of the ball deep inside her own half as well. So takes it forward. Forward into space for O'Brien. O'Brien looks up. Just try to get away from the marker. Making a good run, surface ideal for runners this afternoon. Ball inside, and the referee has, well, he's given the point. He's called it back. Called it, called it back. Yeah, not often you see that. The shot comes in like that, but uh, he had the hand up and quite correctly. Calls it back, no advantage in crew, accrued, so he's called it back at this stage. For Mano warming up a couple of substitute. Limited options, of course, for London, who... Paddy Bowles tells me are missing quite a few and he said he hasn't had a full squad this year because of work commitments and different things. O'Reilly and it's yeah, over the bar on the score. right hand side. She's very very accurate the Canoli player. Rushing sort of dictating the play here at the moment Paddy for Fermanagh. She's sort of involved from the kickouts her own kickouts and pressing their kickouts so. Yeah absolutely this kickout is going to be important for Coyle Lyons. Again, it's down the throat of the Fermanagh players down this near side, but it is a London player gets a hand on to it, and it is uh, Captain Tuig from Cork. Nice ball forward. Still work to be done, though, and mopping up the loose ball. There should be Courtney Murphy, the former captain, of course, in All Ireland, one captain. 
does well moves the ball forward to Bannon it's a sad look about this for a man of set up despite there's players away Daniel Maguire down this uh, left hand side great run from Bannon as well it will come across back across to uh, Maguire and Maguire drops this one in and Good drops score. it over the bar Fantastic that's an excellent score. score of the day so far Chris yeah definitely that was, that was a tight angle there she took it on I thought she was going to we pop a uh, ball over to Brenda but yeah, Bannon was away there wasn't she but lucky in your scoring zone you're going to be happy with your players taking it rather than take that risk and they're, they're clicking on the scores, which is important. Yeah. And anybody watching Andrew and Carlo will be interested in this one this afternoon, no doubt as well. Ball through the centre. Again, it's intercepted, and there's work to be done from a... Oh, well, foot in, says the referee. There's still work to be done from a London point of view to get the ball out. But they have possession now with a free. And it's just London, if, if they've got a wee bit more willing <coughs> runners, especially for that inside ball, Paddy, the forwards are contesting it, but there's no support there, and the likes of Courtney is having a field day, sweeping the ball up. And uh, Well, the ball's coughed up easily here by Alcorn. Clark trying to close the gap there as well, but she's under pressure, and the ball cleared down this left-hand side once again, picked up by uh, Maguire. Actually, Maguire, it is, or Neve McManus, rather. Nice ball. Back out it comes again to Danielle Maguire who's oh, been well very spotted. very industrious lovely Fantastic. cross field passed from her and said it comes but the opportunity isn't taken and it will be a free once he will he give the free he's given a signal anyway whether he gives the free or not remains to be seen but he has called for attention for the injured player break and play Chris uh, from Anna Miners how things looking ah, we're, we're, we're going well we've, we've been out now since November Paddy and We've been building and building. It's just starting to get that click together for Challenge the games, I suppose, is the yeah. key of this time of the year for yeah, yourself. We've, we've been very lucky this year. The last two years, we haven't had much, but we've had a challenge game every weekend since November, so it's been fantastic. And when do you start? I know some of the Ulster competitions are up and running. When do you start? Uh, we're out in April the 1st. April uh, the 1st. First game against Derry, so it'll be quite interesting. Derry's very strong on the way. Fermanagh and Derry rivalries, phenomenal, especially at, at this level as well, at yeah. junior level as well this year, so... Interesting times ahead then, and no doubt one or two of those players will be keeping an eye on maybe progression into James Daly's side in the near future. There is one, I think you were saying, yeah. already there. Aaron Tierney there from Enniskillen, fantastic left foot. Yeah. So, very she good. She may get a run out at some stage this afternoon, depending how things go, of course. In this game, as it stands, it's Fermanagh 1-4, London 2 points. The Exiles still very much in the game they can get a score now of an opportunity but the pass is wayward again there's yeah. been too many of those unenforced errors Chris yeah it's just as you said when they get to that 45 they're making the right runs but the link up play isn't there and Fermanagh's just Fermanagh's loving it there sweeping it up and, and transitioning forward but Quaid puts a nice ball through and it's away out that far side for uh, McManus Grusin hovering around the middle Poacher's goal she got in the early stages of this game. Within eight minutes, she popped the ball to the net. The high ball in from the right hand side. Goalkeeper spilled it, and there, just to, to get the ball to the back of the net, was uh, St. McCartan's player. One thing I would say, Paddy, just with uh, Fermanagh's transition, the ball's into the full forward line. There's no hit and hope. It's it's playing right, one bounce in front of their feet, and Fermanagh yeah. are sweeping it up with, with Neve and Laura Grew. They're winning most of them balls there. Passing is very, very good quality at this juncture in this game. From a Fermanagh point of view, that free goes wayward. That ball goes out and it will be a free for London. Still deep inside their own half and uh, delighted to see a good crowd at this one this afternoon too. Trying to point at stand and plenty of people standing around the terrace and as well watching this one. At, uh, Donut, even a dog. He right on cue to say, I think it was a wee bark there as well. But uh, he was warning about number seven running free, Paddy. She goes forward, trying to get away, and she is. The number seven there is uh, Clark down this near side, and hasn't come her direction at all in this encounter. Passing through the middle of the big midfielder, that is Tuig, the captain. Nice ball forward. In the space, it's intercepted. Clark will win this one. Jinx away from the marker, takes a touch, and then puts it through out this right hand side once again, where it's picked up by. Uh, O'Brien, but O'Brien can't take control of it. It's easily intercepted there by Flanagan. And uh, Fermanagh turn it over once again. Yeah, Fermanagh are reading the balls in from London the whole time, Paddy. And, it's and I think the other thing as well, Chris, the fact is that while well, there's unenforced errors, there's some very good tackling going yeah, on there too. Yeah, definitely. 
she can just see Courtney Murphy there in the, in the background before that she was instructing them all move out of way so the, the free kick can be taken and, and spread the play no doubt you need the experienced players very very evident in this National League campaign and uh, James has plenty of those still to call and despite the fact that there's one or two away of course as well a key score missing of course this year we'll talk about that maybe at half time as the ball goes out that far side and uh, Fermanagh are on the offensive plenty of movement from them out to that far side to Danielle Maguire once again takes a touch and then lays the ball back intelligent play and they've always just seemed to have an extra player over there's a pass that was intercepted it was directed towards Flanagan but didn't make the intended target and Considine picks it up lovely piece of play from Horgis the yes, ball at this right hand nope. side now from Clear O'Brien in there ball through the centre not enough legs on it though well read by Molly McGloin there yeah, well done by her and uh, I have to say, very impressed by her performance this afternoon so far, making great runs as is Shannon McQuaid lobs the ball over the top. Real tussle for possession, but it's London who come out with it once again. Good play there from the midfielder. Tuig, who's sort of all over the park at this stage. She's sort of playing a sweeper, defender, attacker at this stage, even though she's named it number nine. She's working really, really hard. And uh, London are on the attack better ball over the top this time picked up by Rushing Kelly and the ball Fine has score. been curled over the bar and that's the sort of thing they need to be doing yeah they made use of that that first run if you notice she came out and backtracked and went in into the space and, and they got picked out this time they've been trying it it's the first time it's came off and I suppose that's 21 minutes 22 minutes played we've just got the, the three scores on the board but they'll be happy enough to be still in contention of this game yeah, it's just two scores between them yeah, really when, the, when you think of Fermanagh's possession and, and yep. play as you said only two scores in between Fermanagh might be slightly disappointed with that yeah they were flying there for a long time but that ball coughed up comfortably caused them a few problems but they're on the attack here again to sort of answer things with Flanagan another nice ball in. lovely ball inside from Flanagan and a bit of work still to be done she's made continued the run lay it off and uh, it will be a free and you'd expect Danielle Maguire to pop this one over the bar. The Canale Brian Baru's player, of course. I think she, I don't think she's going to go for the scoring. She's looking for somebody inside run. Yeah, yeah, she has. She's to say it to go short. It's not a great ball though. Ooh, but Russian already Russia does so yeah. well to get possession of the ball on that right hand side. Getting it inside again. Opportunity here for Maguire. Continues to run, gets the shot block. in. Blocked down. Super bit of defending from London in there. And the referee. The down man awards the free out on that far side in the beautiful sunshine at Dona. No sign of wonder here despite the snowshowers forecast, but uh, still no, a bit cold. Too referee. short. Two shorts as the referee. I would imagine he'll uh, hop the ball. No, he's, no, he's going to give the free. Yeah, he's give the free. She must have got a warning or something before that. Yeah, and uh, an opportunity now for Danielle McGuire, you'd expect, to try and drop this one over the bar from close range at the clubhouse end of this fine wee ground yeah, and she score. does and it just keeps the gap to what it was 1-5 now to 3 points but uh, Maguire now with that 3 points on the board all, all good scores 24 minutes played and uh, goalkeeper Sinead Coy Lyons, no hurry to get the ball out. Be looks at things, no extra football put up there for the kick out, despite the breeze at their back. It'd be something you would always see a, a team doing, getting the ball up there nice and quick to get out. And maybe they're wanting to just hold their, their counsel in this one and hope for the best, perhaps, as O'Brien picks it up. Maybe nice. there was something in that, Paddy, the way the, the forwards and that done. Maybe it's something they've worked on. Nice ball through the centre, but it's intercepted. But good recovery from the Irvinstown woman. Gets it through, out this uh, right hand side. Again, the full forward Kelly wanting a return pass from Considine. She tries to break ground, three rounder, four rounder, but she manages to get the pass away and has continued to run. Rushing Kelly's ball's high, and Rushing Kelly's ball is Tashé Faril. Way to the right hand side. Yeah, for Mano set up well there, the, the, the four start shot, Paddy, outside the scoring zone. 1 5 to three points at St. Patrick's and Dona. Gleason with a kick out. She's been, uh, she's had a quiet afternoon so far as her home territory. Of course, she knows this pitch well, poor, perhaps, but recovered well and uh, picked yes. up by Flanagan down this near side. Ball over the top to no one though, and a bit of uh, miscommunication and a line ball 
to London, just down below us here on the left hand side. Kick taken into the middle. It's really hit and hope. I really. was just going to say that it's more of a hit and hope no, sideline ball. No direction really in that one whatsoever. And uh, the ball taken quickly out that far side by Ashley Maguire. Maguire, nice ball inside to Bannon. Bannon continues to run, tries to put it over the top, but uh, good recovery in there from uh, Alcorn. And out come London once again. The referee said there was a tug back on the shirt and it will be a free. He's been very consistent with that any time the hand referee, is laid yeah. in, yeah. Well, I've said throughout the National League and all our commentaries this year, some of the refereeing has been absolutely exceptional in the National League. Sometimes you, you worry. It's new season, you don't know what to expect, but the referees have been consistent and been very, very good, no doubt about that. The ball picked up through the centre by Daly. Long ball out that far side. A real chase for possession there, but uh, touch it back Marshall there. Out. The ball has went out, and it will be a lane ball to Fermanagh, despite the appeals from London. Fermanagh in their newly appointed shirts, of course, as well. Looking the part this afternoon there in the, in the green and white, and London in the white and green, as they so often are. Ball through the centre, Ashton O'Brien. Now heads to the wing with it, continues the run. She's been tracked back by Rebecca Considine. But gets the pass away. And look at the run O'Reilly's made down this near side. Plenty of uh, opportunities in that far side. Back it comes again to O'Brien. O'Brien's got Flanagan for support. Decides to give it to Sarah Britton. Britton then out to Flanagan on this near side. Flanagan's oh, effort. Unlucky. Perhaps we, that's why Flanagan's were number seven. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as they often say, but that was... Uh, an effort perhaps the, uh, the idea she was had there. more time yeah she did I don't think she realised she had as much time there Paddy she got yeah. to duck it in another 10 steps and just slotted over the bar but she sort of rushed it we have many games here this afternoon again I think uh, from on the bench must have heard us Paddy they're kicking the balls out now to the, <laughs> the <laughs> London keeper to try and get the ball moving quicker speed it up a wee bit but uh, from on have the advantage of that increasing breeze I shall say in this uh, second half ball out this near side work to be done by the number two, Jordan, the Mayo player. We have to say, London, London are doing well in their kickouts. I think they've won majority of them, you know, so. Slow start, but they've missed one or two, but they're they're getting back into it now as Dilly makes a great run down this right hand side. Fine player, Dilly. Takes a touch, lays it back there to Alcorn. She's Hunter in Connell Gales. She's in stuck there, no one's coming to support me, so. Ball over the top, but it's a poor ball inside from Kelly and. Uh, Kelly's been guilty of that a couple of times this afternoon. She's playing far too far out the park to be the full forward, and it's not effective. Well, even Paddy, she, she got the last score. She made the inside run, so yeah. maybe she should try and sit in there. And I make think the that's what I was just thinking, yeah. But that's why we're up here, and there's uh, <laughs> Patrick Bowles and uh, Dave Byrne and Bino Collins is in the far side, and we're over here. But I think that they think they probably know us. McQuaid picks the ball up on that side. Nice ball again, and uh, from on on the offensive, the referee gives a free. Yeah, again, just that lane now, man, he's, he's, he's blowing it all the time. So Anna Martin there, one on that free from your own club, Newtown, where you're managing, of course, yeah. seniors this year. And uh, the free on that uh, right-hand side. You'd expect uh, Danielle Maguire to pop this one over the bar. She has the angle. And yeah, she has a score. Right. Umpires took her time there, the down men. I uh, sort of doubted myself, I was about to say, I was going to the same thing there, but there you and are. The umpires took their time there, so. 163 points, good start, good performance during the first half. We're coming up towards half time here, wait to see how much additional time there is going to be on the, the referee's stopwatch. Lions, Collins hits this one out in the far side. Collins, Lions, or Coyle, Lions rather, hits this one out and doesn't make the mark at all. The ball goes out over the line on the far side. Fermanagh with O'Reilly takes possession of the ball. Flanagan has made a good run out this near side if it comes her direction. She's continually driving forward and fair play for play, play to her for doing it. It's picked up there by Neve O'Brien deep inside her own half, playing that sweeping role. Considine tries to get away from the marker, does well, continues to run. Opportunity over the top, perhaps it comes the way of the full forward. The referee has given the free. It wasn't a full forward, I say, went down, but it was a good ball over the top. I just had a glance to see who was making the run. And as you said earlier on, Chris, those runs have proved very, very difficult to stop. Yeah, it's been them, they caused themselves problems with them earlier on, but uh, 
that was almost spot on there. London, London are doing it. They just did he just have a wee bit more conviction? They had from Anad the players over, but it was. A, I don't even know if that was a free in my eyes. It was more of a coming together, but well, the referee getting a mouthful of water away to the right hand side as well. But look, them runs from London are dangerous. It's just can they utilize it more, especially coming into the second half? The well, the player is back up onto her feet again. It is uh, the number. 13, that is uh, Claire Byrne from Dublin. Hollyway Gales. And uh, a free here to close the gap. And every time you think Fermanagh's just going to pull away, London gets something on the board. Yeah, it's just even every time Fermanagh get that, even that glimpse at the start with the wee score, two or three minutes in, Fermanagh just seemed to be on top, and then London just play that wee ball in, cuts Fermanagh open, and they're chipping away at the points, buddy. Just keeping themselves in the game. They're, 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 they're working hard. And that's all you can ask for a team, really, that their season's over, literally, until the uh, championship. But that's went over the bar. As the referee blown the half-time whistle, he has right within a minute. So there you are. 1-6 to four points. Uh, I suppose, from a point of view of Fermanagh, They've weathered any storms that have come their way. They're working hard. They're looking good. Yeah, for man, it's looking good. For me, they'd, they'd be a little bit disappointed just that they're not, they're not more ahead than they are with the possession the player they've had. And then you go to London, they're going to be very happy with the level of possession for man has had. And there's, what's it, three scores, three yeah, kicks of the ball, really, in, in, the, in it. We've got a half time games here for the, the punters as well. And of course, uh, Emer Smith uh, missing this year. At least for the league, anyway, it has to be a big blow for Fermanagh because she's been such an effective player, such a score getter for them over the past maybe four or five years. Yeah, it's even the effective play, not only getting the score, but her presence for other defences is, ph is phenomenal. You, you've seen it even in Derek Onley's run this year and the, the All Ireland. We played them ourselves, and, and Emer Smith was just fantastic. So a miss for any team, but then you also take Blaine Bogue being injured yeah. and Lisa Maguire. Two, two, two capable scores. But I suppose on the plus point, you see Blahine and at least they're both togged out this yes, afternoon, yeah. so may play some part, particularly maybe if they get through to the, the league semi final where they no doubt will be needed. But uh, many games for us here at uh, Donut Half Time in the Little National Football League Division 4 clash between Fermanagh and London. It is Fermanagh one goal and six points, London four points. We will have a break and be back very shortly with exclusive coverage here of this National League encounter. We were told the game was over before we'd even started. We were told our bodies weren't made for it. It wasn't our time to play. We played anyway. And together we played like there was no tomorrow. And they told us that was fine. You can play. You're good enough. And thought that was good enough for us. It wasn't. We are relentless. The game isn't over until we say it's over. Until we get everything we've given everything for. Until we level the playing field. Lidl, proud supporters of ladies Gaelic football.
Welcome back to St Patrick's in Dona Hospitality. Absolutely exceptional. Lovely cup of tea there at half time. One for you as well, Chris. So you probably went and had your tea, had you? I had uh, the hey. maybe sandwiches down there. So. Uh, sandwiches too. <laughs> hey, are you? So when, you're, when you're important, you're important. When that's the county manager, of course, it's change made. Aoife Flanagan from St Lawrence's in Manchester is lined out against London for Fermanagh. I know it's confusing, <coughs> but there we are. But she is travelling back and forward, and that is some commitment from her. Travelling back for games and training, I believe. And we're about to get started here in the second half. I think she's come into the middle of the park, and uh, the ball touched away immediately there by Daly. And it's picked up then by Tuig. It's a more determined uh, London side. Nice ball inside there to Lamb. Lays it back to the full forward. Kelly is going to drop short. And the Gleason, Gleason does. Well, there was two close in on her. But she's that experienced. She does no, them things do not face her. And she easily got the ball there as O'Reilly picks it up. Yeah, you see the, the intent there from London at the start. They, they direct. So hopefully Fermanagh can nullify that. Or we keep going in an opening game. Brenda Bannon is replaced. There's a couple of substitutes on there. We'll just wait and see the numbers in a moment. But it is uh, certainly Aoife Flanagan has been introduced in the second half. We'll wait to see the other change in a moment as well as uh, London going the offensive. Was two egg again. A bit more determined luck about London. But again, the coughed up possession there to put the ball through the centre. Goalkeeper Gleeson easily taking that one away. It's picked up by Considine in the far side. The uh, Clare girl. And it is uh, Kira Clark who's been introduced. Ball inside, an opportunity of a goal chance. Gleason there once again. The referee has called it back though for a free. And it was a good bit of running there from Claire O'Brien, the Parnells player. Opened it up, had the opportunity. The referee has called it back for a free. And if you can get this one, Chris, it'll close the gap and it make life difficult. It could, it could settle uh, London and then from Anna might have to try and open up more, leave bigger gaps, you know, because they don't want the, the scoreline to come down any closer than it is, but London have started the second half very well. Positive start by London, and yeah. it's the player who got the free, Claire O'Brien. Drops it in, it's turned out the back post, but the referee, or the umpire signal has went away, but it looked like it was at the back post that was still kept in play, but it has, well, it's one of those wides, I suppose, you get now and again. Oh, uh, Roshin took the early kick out, now he's threw a free in. He done the same in the first yeah, half for consistent, London. So consistent, yeah. yeah. And uh, didn't work out. Ball has to go forward, of course, over the 20 metre line, from the 20 metre line. So London were wasteful in that last free kick. You'd expect at this angle, they'll sort of put it over. And they're leaving it to Clare O'Brien again. <laughs> directly in front of the goals. You'd expect her to put this one over. But we'll wait and see. Breeze blown into her face, of course, as well. On a sunny afternoon at Dona. Dropped in. Yeah, this one's over. Dropped over the bar. And uh, just cuts that deficit. 1 6 now to 5 points. And uh, there has been some great battles with London over the last few years for this uh, Fermanagh side. London, of course, were flying a couple of years last year, it was. And uh, changed London's side, of course, it has to be said. But uh, flying and came back into the game. London's definitely started the second half yeah. on the front foot. They're, they're aggressive to every ball. They're closing down kickouts. And that's the second one from Anna to give up there. And uh, well, it's recovered well, though, and I have to say, well done there by the number four. O'Brien gets it to uh, McManus, operating deep inside her own half. Takes a wee bit too much out of it, but still manages to recover possession and move it out that far side once again to O'Reilly. Yeah, from the, I think there could be a change in Fermanagh's play here, Paddy. They've put Aoife Flanagan in full forward. I'm just looking there as well. There's a long ball, a roving ball into yeah. space, and it goes to the attacker. Takes her time, lays it back, back across to O'Reilly. Flanagan in there screaming for the ball, but it doesn't make her direction. But they have, uh, she's added a bit of height to that full forward line, that's for sure. And Grew still there as well, I think. But uh, we'll wait and see as the ball is cleared out that far side. Work for Kelly to do there. Been tracked across the whole way there by Molly McGloin. He's had a good afternoon, I'd have to say. Yeah, she's, she's been very steady. Molly's, Molly doesn't get some of the credit that she deserves. She does a lot of the unseen work. Uh, Paddy, maybe yourself would see. And so it's, it's nice, nice for her. Good work from her. She takes possession of the ball there from Britain. And lays it out 
to McManus again trying to get the ball away but uh, again there's a bit more bite to London and there was in the first half they know perhaps that uh, they have nothing to play for in terms of points on the board only a couple of points on the board but certainly the championship isn't far away and they will be rearing up to go in that of course well look the balls London are winning here now Fermanagh was doing that the whole first half and you can see London are starting to turn the screw on that which is well, again, what has caused them problems in the uh, first half has caused them problems again in this half as well. They coughed up simple possession as uh, Martin tries to go forward, but she coughs up possession and gets a free out as well. And across it comes here to uh, Dilly from Turconnell Gales down this uh, left-hand side. Nice ball forward into Clark. Screaming for possession of the ball, it goes back across through the centre once again, picked up by O'Brien, who's been very industrious in the second half, far more than she was in the first. And this is a much improved London performance in the second period. Back it goes to 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 uh, Daly on the far side, squeezing forward now in numbers, and uh, Gary making a great run as Tuig down this uh, left hand side if it comes her direction from Alcorn. But it's uh, still work to be done with out there. And the challenge comes in and it will be a free out. And while we have a moment, of course, that uh, Fermanagh draw, of course, coming up very, very shortly. A lot of work being done behind the scenes to fund Fermanagh football. Yeah, they're they're looking to improve facilities to have a, a proper centre of excellence there at the moment. And it'll be nice just uh, for teams, the county teams, to have their own their own hub rather than go from pitch to pitch. So, But the work going on in the background, Paddy, is fantastic. And that, of course, listen, it will be an opportunity for all the teams in the county. Yes, exactly. The, at, the, at the moment, there's two pitches, you know, so it does be limited with, you think, the amount of underage teams and, and hurling teams. So with the right. new facilities, it's going to give it a more open open field for different different age groups to get, to get playing at the hub. Well, great work being done. And I want to make, uh, listen, a real fortress for training, of course, and a lot of work being done by my good friend Jared Tracy, of course. And the funds are going to be utilised towards coaching, player development, developing existing facilities and supporting county teams at all levels. And tickets available now at £100 each. A yellow card on the far side. I'm looking to see who that is. The referee not happy with that challenge. And uh, the referee has issued the card. And uh, adds maybe to London's issues in terms of uh, at a time when they were actually on coming more into the game. Yep. And certainly more and more into the game. The yard has been issued though. And uh, there's a bit of annoyance on that far side from the uh, player who has been uh, carded. Is it number 13, Paddy, I think? It is, is it? the number no, five, five who has got the card. That's Alcorn for that challenge that went down. And London contemplating changes there as well as see Therese Moore warming up on that far side they're on the attack here once again Blahine Bogue ready to be introduced as well or Sarah no, si checking si a wee second it's her sister her sister yeah Kala Kitla Kila Bogue is Ke it Kila Bogue yeah. Kila Bogue about to be drafted in there I said sisters all look the same to me <laughs> especially <laughs> from where I started I thought it was Blahine myself uh, absolutely <laughs> ball through the centre but it isn't a good one and uh Fermanagh mopped this one up and then eventually immediately turned the fence into attack. The ball picked up by Danielle Maguire. Nice ball out this right hand side. Work to be done though by McManus. And she has possession. She's done very well, but she's running into a cul de sac there. Manages to get the ball through to Flanagan or to uh, the uh, Eva Flanagan. Danielle uh, Maguire's an acre space here. Nice ball say. from Flanagan. And she oh. hits that one wide. She'd be disappointed with that after the long trip from Manchester. It would have been if she had a scene. Danielle Shows McGuire some commitment though, doesn't yeah, it? To be does. coming back to play in your county. And a substitution about to be made. And uh, we'll wait to see who that is on the far side. And uh, who's going off, rather? Sterling McHugh handed over the paperwork there on the far side, but the change still hasn't been made. Referee was about to do it, but then called it back. And the play continues now with uh, London coming forward. But the wayward pass too much for Clark to take possession there and uh, the lane ball awarded on that far side and it is with Kira Clark from Knockney Knock any Gales. One of the new clubs in the county, of course, Chris as well. Yeah, that'd be the, the two teams, Timor and Derlin, yeah. joined together for the ladies team. So 
amalgamation key to keeping uh, p participation going. Keila Bogue on for Ashley Maguire. And he's uh, the second half. And the uh, Temple woman, no stranger to Fermanagh football, that's for sure. As a player down receiving treatment, two players down receiving treatment over there as well. Let's see who it is from her angle. I just even think that Paddy Fermanagh has sort of changed their transition. You know, they're playing with the wind now, so you can sort of see to put Eve in there, left plenty of space for the long ball. Just isn't working just quite yet. That hasn't, uh, uh, they haven't had the direction with it really at all. No. And there seems to be a bit of a change in the weather. One's starting to pick up a wee bit more as well, which I'll add to you at London's Rose. They are down to 14 players as the ball goes back up the park again towards that breeze, into the breeze rather, with the London trying to just get building that early good start. Considine on that far side, working like a Trojan. Great run down this near side as well from Lorraine Lamb. Won't come her direction. Challenge comes in. It's a hefty challenge there. Both players really just had eyes on the ball. And uh, certainly uh, Claire O'Brien has picked up a knock for that one, that's for sure. Both had eyes on the ball. Yeah, Nothing both else. had eyes on the ball. And, and it just a collision at the end. I think it was more of the legs. But he's, he's given the free to London here for this. That's a hefty enough challenge, that's for sure. And uh, the Fermanagh player down there as well, getting a bit of treatment. Marshall O'Brien. Referee have an award there with the, the number 13 there to Claire Byrne. I think I think London are asking maybe for the yellow yard here. I don't know. They're asking when the referee says it was a pull down. And uh, the wee man on the far side there, Dave Byrne, not overly happy with that call, perhaps from the, the down official. But it has been given, and it is... Uh, they're down to 14 players, and Claire O'Brien has picked up what looks like a nasty enough wee knock there. But both players had eyes in the ball, and uh, yeah, it was she's back up on her feet, and she's okay. So there was no intention or malice in that, Paddy. It was no, absolutely not. Both eyes in the ball. Referee says so that she did pull her down. So there you go. And, and it's just challenge. weird. He'd give the he pointed for London free now. Yeah. It's for Manny. He's done that twice. Yeah, that's twice he's done that. But uh, and he calls it back. No. Oh. Somebody said Somebody's something. talking to him, and he's not happy with that one, that's for sure. And it's Claire O'Brien who's not happy with. He's got he's pulled the yellow here. And yeah. he's given another yellow card. Big call. Yeah, big call. She must have, she must have said something to him, Paddy, because it wasn't for the pull down or for that free. So she has must have said something the way he didn't like. And that's the right hand side. Of course, two players from the right hand side now has been have been uh, called ashore for yellow cards in this uh, second half, which uh, we have played almost 13 minutes, won six to five points. And remarkably, the weather is changing, it's starting to rain. So there you go, gloves required. To be a scramble for gloves, as there always is. As uh, the ball's picked up by Danielle Maguire, has scored four this afternoon so far, ball over the top. Just doesn't make the direction of Laura Grew on this occasion, but she still holds on to possession. Back across to Maguire. Maguire over carries the ball, says the referee. And uh, we're going to be joined by a few spectators now who want to get into the stand here beside <laughs> us because the rain is starting to come down. Sherry afternoon. No snow yet on the way, Chris. We're happy enough. No, as long as the snow stays away until we get home, Paddy, we'll That's be happy it, enough. We'll be happy enough, Shirley. <laughs> and uh, well, as it stands, they're down, London now down to 13 players in this contest. And if you just look, London are actually coping well with the, the, the player down, Paddy. But the second one for Mana should start turning the screw, but but they need to be turning the screw, yeah. Chris. You know, because it's only one six to five points, and on a day when they do need to get plenty of scores on the board as well, just for their own benefit. Yeah, you know, uh, should things go against uh, Antrim in the later afternoon throwing, so we'll wait to see how that pans out. That's a three o'clock throwing this afternoon, Antrim and Carlo, an Antrim victory, well, uh, and uh, for Mana victory will ensure for Mana and Antrim through to the semi-finals and the potential of course as we said earlier of a late from semi-final is with Flanagan now late. Flanagan closing in on goal opportunity and it's ah, in the net goal. and yeah. that should end this contest you yeah, would think you'd think now London's head might drop that Fermanagh should start picking up and continuing on now to try and get the scores up on the board but they do need to be 
I think that's the key yeah, in this game. They yeah. need to be building on the scores as the rain 100%. comes down. And look, that was a good run too, be Caleb Bogan there. That's worth the trip for Manchester. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, that's, <laughs> a, that's, that's what you want. That's the flight paid for. <laughs> <laughs> but fair play there, she's making a great effort. Yeah, so when, you, when you think it's for it's it's the travelling on Saturday, getting to bed early for the early flight Sunday morning or coming Unreal. home Saturday, you know, when you finish your college and that's it, but a lot of commitment in ladies' football that maybe goes on scene with both these counties this afternoon, you yeah. have to say. And right through the board. It's a busy weekend, of course, for the LGFA with Congress held in uh, Trim, in County Meath, and next year's will be in County Clare. Bino was telling me to remain people, of course, Bernard Collins, remain people of St Clare. He's a great exponent of it and uh, delighted as will be in his native county. He's been in London now 20 odd years and says he travels home regularly. You can see now from Anna that from Anna's starting to open yeah. up a wee bit. Keenan driving forward. It's the first time we've seen her in the attack coming from the the right corner back position. Moving the ball through the centre. A bit of ease about them now. But it's the finish, of course, that we want to see. Flanagan out this right hand side. Trying to get away from the marker. Gets it inside to Danielle Maguire. Maguire lays it across that far side. O'Reilly's made a good run as well. Flanagan takes possession, hits it well into a a, a, a sea of white jerseys there as the rain starts to lash down now here at uh, St Patrick's in Dona. And that's just going to leave that ball a bit slippier, the ground a bit slippier after being so dry there. Paddy. Yeah, so it was a great morning here as O'Brien has to, or the uh, number four there, Bridget Gallagher, tries to close in on it. Now, the Fermanagh players went down onto the challenge. I think it's more a slip more than anything else. Looks to be uh, an ankle injury. But it's back in stead with uh, Martin. Martin lays it across that far side. Opportunity here for McManus. She can't get away from the marker. She's been closed down quickly. But from Anna have numbers over. And again, it's for Maguire. The number 10's down. Needing treatment, Sarah Britton. That effort comes in and that mm. one goes wide. That's and uh, an opportunity here now for treatment. Coming up to 17 minutes played in this second half. 2-6 to five points to Fermanagh who know they have to win this afternoon and that's the key Chris that was what it was all about today for them yeah 100% uh, uh, the win first and foremost but now they've sort of got on top it's walking the score now Paddy. London have made a change it's Claire Byrne has been uh, called ashore on that far side and a replacement coming on to see what the number was but we'll check in a moment no panic with that as uh, the rain continues to lash down here did say there'd be a few showers but uh, Worrying from a Fermanagh point of view is that that player is heading off injured on the far side and it looks to be, is it their Sarah, Sarah Britton, Sarah Britton yeah. at number 10, yeah, who is going to have to be replaced and uh, Who's that coming London are going to make a substitution with their goalkeeper as well, that's Emily Driscoll Mooney from Turconnell Gales, who looks like she's going to be drafted in here in this uh, second half unlimited subs of course Eamon McMahon's come on there for the injured Sarah Britton so it's an opportunity as well for the club to get players out, players to run out yeah it'll, uh, sometimes it'll be difficult Paddy I suppose in the last game last week against Carlo it's a bit tighter, not everyone got to run out so yeah. days like this well, I suppose it's only 7 points two up, it's not a yeah, massive but story, still but with the two, you know, the two uh, players, the two players over. have made a big difference now. Because there's no doubt that opening ten minutes, London were very much back in the contest. That got a point in the board, field maybe to to break through as clear cut. Maybe Rushing Gleeson was equal to the challenge, and the ball did come in. But from Anna on the offensive here again with Flanagan, take, take possession of the ball. It's with the corner back. O'Brien, she flashes this one in. And flashes us one way to fifth wide in this encounter. Three in the second half to There's six to the five. The Sinbin uh, is back on the first Sinbin. Sinbin. The first Sinbin is back on and that is Emer Alcorn. And the substitute coming in there is Emily Driscoll Mooney coming in to replace uh, goalkeeper Sinead Coy Lance. A chance I suppose certainly more so for Patrick Bowles to be able to run out players here this afternoon. Yeah you could see because maybe maybe the next time London's out they mightn't have the first choice keeper available so maybe this is what he's trying to do to see the difference. Yeah. And it was a good kick out. Good kick out from her. Good direct kick out. Picked up well by Neve O'Brien. And London want to turn defence into attack pretty quickly. But again, the wayward pass out that right hand side. It's been 
so many times it's went out towards the substitutes there it just has not made its mark at all Chris no it, but if you sort of look there Paddy at the game there's two up in the 45 from London there and Fermanagh have the numbers and the transition forward it's just tough ask at the moment yeah, for they, London they've, they've kept the three back four five back now and then the ball picked up on this right hand side O'Brien has been very effective going forward in the second half nice ball inside to uh, the number 20 the substitute with a heavy strap on Emery McMahon Launches it long. Nice ball Good inside. Ball. Lovely ball. The planning in. Shot comes in and over the bar. Score. Good that's, score. That's 1-1 one, one for me for now. So it's, it's starting to come off them now. That ball into them. It took them a while. There's no doubt about that. Took them a wee while to get into that. But uh, certainly the distribution of O'Brien has been excellent. No, Ashley O'Brien's fantastic there. She, she never stops. She's a willing runner no matter what. Good, good performance from her in this encounter. Good performance, good solid performance from Fermanagh overall. Yeah, you'd have to say, wouldn't you? With the likes of even Danielle Maguire and all there, she's she's linking the play of Roshan O'Reilly. But all round and again, Molly in the back when she's called upon, she's she's making the difference there. Well, it is London on the attack. What's the substitute? Therese Morgan getting the free and uh, taken quickly. Trying to get Clark away through the centre, but again, well work to be done, and that she does well to take possession of the ball. Kelly's in there screaming for it, it won't come her direction. The defenders dealing with everything that comes through. Bogue there doing well, and the long range pass, trying to get the attack away once again. But well read by Bridget Gallagher from Turconnell Gales, tries to get to the substitute, is just in there, Moran. And down that right hand side again, they have trouble. But the two managed to hold it in play this time. Yeah, it was very good. And uh, try and transition up the park here once again. 22 minutes almost played in the second half. 2-7 to 5 points. And the scores are racking up. But Pramana could do with one or two more. But there's a long way to still to go in this encounter. Ball out that right-hand side. Nice pass inside once again to... Uh, Considine from what I sweep up again, yeah. they've been so effective mopping up every sort of loose ball that has come through. And that nice pass over the top there to Bogue trying to drive forward. The referee though gives it the free over carries and the free awarded. And uh, a sure rain has died away as Tuig takes possession of the ball. The court gear gets it back inside again. Nice pass out that far side to Lamb. Tries to take on the marker. A number of options for her though, and she has to do yeah, a lot of work herself. And done for over carrying yeah, there. That's she had to do it herself, but yeah. there's no one there supporting her. And that's not a fault of herself, it's, it's no. no support, so she had no other option to try and, and look for support, so she got done for over carrying there. But Fman have been quite wasteful here too in the last last few minutes, but even with their own kick passing, Paddy. Yeah. So that was so good there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a strange, strange game, I suppose you'd have to say. Oh, it almost, almost almost came off there for Danielle Maguire and she'd have been hitting the hammer and trying to get up the park with that one but uh, instead she has to get back to fan yeah. then she wants Sloppy the ball back then, yeah. she's been all over the park this afternoon fine performance from her certainly contender for player, player of the match this afternoon there's no doubt about that as Keenan picks it up Keenan out this right hand side for O'Reilly O'Reilly does well lovely bit of quick hands from her getting the ball to O'Brien Bogue to rushing O'Reilly. There's Ash O'Brien sweeping up again. Good bit of play out to O'Reilly again. And well, the pass is, well, it's a skyward ball, really. It's not even a pass. It will fall into the hands there of Neve O'Brien. She goes to ground onto the challenge and will be a free out. But uh, good bit of defend, or good bit of work there from uh, London, defending and sort of uh, just closing things down. Yeah, with with all that Neve Daly there for our London has been quite impressive. She's very strong on the ball. She's you know she's she's everywhere as well. So she's playing well. They've worked hard. This London side they certainly haven't been shown up in this game. Moore, the far side, battling for possession there with Bogue. Bogue tries to get a hand onto it. Does get a hand onto it. Both players, well, the referee's going to hop the ball. Good call from the uh, match official, the down man. He's done quite well today. He's yeah, been he's very consistent well, yeah. in all his calls. Consistent throughout yeah. this game. We're into the almost into the final five minutes of this one. And it very much is going to plan for James Daly and Kiva Morgan. Every hops the ball. 
and gives a free, which is so often the case. For man on the offensive, out that far side, picked up by McMahon. McMahon's ball over the top, tries to get a bit of movement going. Oh. And the chance come in there on uh, Lou, Laura Grew, and it will be free from certainly a scorable angle. You have to get back rushing to put this over. Uh, rushing gets in there to take position once again. Two points on the board this afternoon. Quiet afternoon from her point of view, but she's been all over the park. And yeah. some unseen work being done by her this afternoon. The ball dropped in, and the ball has dropped over, over the bar. The bar. Good and Keeps the scoreboard ticking over 2 8 now to 5 points. And uh, just a goal and 2 points, so in the second half. And you'd be worried about that, Chris, wouldn't you? You'd like to be scoring a bit more in a game like this. Yeah, 100%, especially when they know what's on. The look, the wind was there. The down, down two players, and just not effective enough on hmm. the scoreboard. You'd be disappointed, perhaps, with that. And even in the first half, with the level of possession they had, they just weren't converting to the possession, but it could open up here in the last Flanagan. five minutes. O'Reilly on the right-hand side. Goal chance, and it's and turned we go. Net. As we said, well done. Courtney Murphy. And it's just about that, taking that, that chance. Courtney, there's a half-back. Just taking that chance going forward. And it, it's paid off. 17-5. That score deficit now looks a bit more healthy. That's for sure. Ball out that far side, though. Bogue can't keep it in play, and it has went out. And you just suspect what's left now, buddy. Five minutes left. Yeah. You'd, you'd like to think from Anna would just go, just storm forward here now at every opportunity. Ball on that far side, sideline ball from a London point of view. Patrick Bowles has changed a few players now and obviously just given players a run out at this stage. Other counties might be happy with that, but I suppose when you have nothing to play for, you may as well give your players a run out with a championship not that far away. Especially especially when they come over, it's nice for them to, to make the trip to get a bit of game time, Paddy. Absolutely. McMahon does well. McMahon at this right hand side to McManus. Nice bit of uh, play from her. Takes the return pass. Flanagan's made the run out the right hand side. Flanagan from distance. And that's yeah, dropped over the score. bar. That's one two in this half. Well she's done. done well. Yeah, she's done well. She's come on when she gets the ball. She's she's very effective there at the moment. Nice left foot. Absolutely. Three nine to five points. That's a thirteen point advantage. There were minus, I think, weren't they? Going yeah. Into this game. Minus, minus fourteen. Four, minus, minus four, yeah. So they're slowly getting on level terms. If we can get another score on the board, I think the players here are spotty about getting the scores up now. They're starting to turn the screw a wee bit. Well, that's it. But there's. Uh, you have to give great praise to Lund who yeah, have worked it's tirelessly. It's it's and they still haven't stopped. Like it's it's yeah. a tough ask on them and, and, and all credit to them. And they're look at number 15 free of... You know, Brian, up and down the park. She was in the corner back there a few moments ago. Now she's heading towards corner forward. Screaming for the ball there from Considine. But it will go across that right-hand side once again. Picked up by the full forward rushing Kelly from around towards. Long ball inside. And it's picked up so yeah, well by Ashley O'Brien. Superb performance from her today. Yeah, and it's all the unseen work, Paddy. And she's taking a knock there as well. And I think she's okay. Yeah, she's walking away. She's grand. She's sort of run into the wee terrier the player. She's very, very good. Yeah. Solid yeah, performance. Yeah. Solid performance from her. The referee just checking. She's <laughs> so She's away. And the referee's away to talk to the umpire. I think it has something to do with that challenge. Yeah, whether so the player stopped, back, perhaps. Yeah. We'll wait to see what he does. And uh, are they saying it's coming together? Are they? I think that's the signal that he's given. Anyway, I'm using the field glasses to get a quick look across just to see. They're freezing the hunt for somebody. That's for sure. And uh, we'll wait to see what he says. He looks to be looking for someone, Paddy, doesn't he? Clare O'Brien's back in the mix there oh again too. There's the book out, he's following someone. Yeah, and number 23 in there now is Erica Douglas from Adam C. And the referee's going to have a word with someone. And it's the number five, Emer uh, Alcorn, who's already been yellow carded, and that'll be a red card. Not good for... Yeah, and that's a second. And that's a red. Well, look, a bit, we could say it's a bit harsh, but look, he's being consistent in this play, Paddy. And Alcorn will not be happy with that. 
Ephraim McCabe from Adam C been drafted in there as well, I think it is. In these latter stages of this encounter. 29 minutes, just come up to 30 minutes played. There won't be much in the way of additional time, I wouldn't imagine. 3 9 to 5 points, 13 point advantage. On my counting, maybe somebody else could count it better than me, but I'm just taking the risk with that. Maths was never my strong point. That's, why, that's why I'm letting you do it. Oh, well, good enough, that's <laughs> two of us then. It's a blind leading the blind, <laughs> perhaps. But certainly, it's uh, going the way for man. Anyway, that's the main thing. Ball across this near side, picked up there by the uh, McManus. McManus to Riley. Good Out that ball, far side. Ball. Opportunity, perhaps. Shot comes in. Oh. And the goalkeeper does well there from Daniel Maguire. The goalkeeper got down low for that one and managed to stop it. That's the sub goalkeeper, of course, Emily Driscoll Mooney from the Turconnell Gales. Referee letting the play continue. Back it goes with Bridget Gallagher. She's worked hard, the lead from player, this afternoon. But ball out this near side. It's going to be a risk for possession. It's going to go out. It's going to be a Fermanagh hand on it. Shannon McQuaid takes it quickly. The captain of Fornia off the Zafir Malik side. Ball through the centre. Nice ball. Another score key in this one. Back it goes to Bogue. Plenty of opportunities to go forward. As Courtney Murphy picks it up. Score of the last goal. Nice ball inside. Trying to find Flanagan. And it goes over the, the whole way inside there to the goalkeeper. Who's been under pressure. And she done Goes well. well. Yeah, she done, done well. very well there. She sold the dummy there to Flanagan and uh, she's been quite impressed with the, yeah. the substitute keeper. Yeah, she's done well. A couple of good kickouts as well. Ball out this near side. A bit of work to be done by Ellen O'Brien, the Parnells player, and uh, she does manage to get the ball away. Claire O'Brien in there taking possession of the ball. Her sister. There's an Eve, a very strong runner in the ball. Daly's been very good. James Daly will be wondering how he can get her back <laughs> to the Fermanagh, I would imagine, because she's certainly one of the pick of the London players this afternoon. She's worked tirelessly. Ball through the centre to O'Reilly. Flanagan's made a great run inside. It won't come her direction, no. It was just too much on it. And to be fair to Alan O'Brien, she read that danger well. Ball out the far side will be picked up by uh, the London side. The X side is driving forward here in the closing stages of this one. They do trail 3-9 to 5 points. And there's Daniel McGuire again. McGuire's in there again, battling for every loose ball. There's an opportunity here. The ball goes over the top, but it's a wayward pass. It will be a free in. And it's not the sort of free you want to be giving away at this stage in the game. 32 played. You sort of want to get another couple of scores on the board. Time's going to go against them here. It'll be a bad time to concede another one. He's looking at the watch and say this could be the final oh, few players. I think so. As the ball goes out that far side to Tuig, who's worked hard. Tuig inside to Considine. Great performance from her this afternoon. Oh. A lone furrow at times. Con closes in. And she's popped that Good one score. over the bar. That's Considine. 3 9 to 6. 12. Wee bit of off be rushing, not like her. Kayla Bogue, well done, well done. Defence, defence equal to it there. And that the clear lines here once again, and off they go. points I think between them at this stage as the ball goes out this right hand side once again. Good run to by Bogue. Referee blows the whistle, gives a free. Certainly deep in the injury time now here at uh, Dona. Bogue takes, tries to just knock it on. Referee taking a note as he the ball comes out to Martin on this near side. Martin into the centre again. McManus, good performance from several from Anna players. She's one of them. High ball in from O'Reilly. Oh, what Over a score. Power. What a great Fantastic. score from O'Reilly. Fantastic. A lot of tireless work from her this afternoon. No doubt about that. Kick out comes once again. And Danielle picking up again. She's, she's, she's done well. She's absolutely been superb this afternoon. The ball goes back again the whole way. 
Referee does blow the final whistle. Three ten to six points. Now they wait on Antrim and Carlo, but on form you'd expect Antrim to come to out on top of that one. Yeah, I was going going by Antrim's last few games. The the beat London well. It was actually a quite close game against Fermanagh. I'd expect Antrim, but again you just never know, Paddy, with with Carlo, they're always hit and miss. And you didn't know what to expect in this game this afternoon either, because you don't know what you're going to get from London. But one thing you did get from London was the work rate. They never gave up. They could have dropped their head when they were down two players. They kept going, they kept going. So it was fantastic character from them. And um, from a point of view, they'll be hoping obviously the results go right for them. But the championship isn't far away. Can they give it a crack now if they get a few players back as well oh, from injury? Yeah, 100%, I think. I think we have Derry and, and, and Chiaro on yep. our side, I think, you know, so uh, with a few players coming back from injury, the, the strength and depth coming back, you can just sort of see the likes of even Blahin, Massive, Lisa. Lisa and Danielle are very similar players, so to have the, another Danielle there would be fantastic. That's a 13-point advantage, and I'm just talking James Daly, he's not overly impressed with the referee there, he's having a word with him there as he walked off the park as well. They'll be happy enough with the result. Uh, they can build in this, obviously, and I'm sure they're hoping for a semi-final spot. Yeah, hoping. They look, first and foremost, what they wanted to do was get the result. They got it. They racked up the scores a wee bit. Maybe could have been more convincing in, in certain parts of taking the shot on to get the scores, but other than that, job done for Fermanagh, and now we sit and wait for Anthony Giardo. Absolutely. Our thanks, as always, to Dee here on camera, to yourself, Chris, for your help this afternoon. The best luck with your uh, with your Fermanagh Miners in the, the campaign to come starting on the 1st of April. And, of course, our thanks to everybody here at Donut too, and thanks to Jimmy and the boys in the studio too. Plenty of more football to come this afternoon. More football next week, of course, on the Little National Football League as we continue our exclusive coverage here. Do please enjoy the rest of your afternoon. In the meantime, Slan. We were told the game was over before we'd even started. We were told our bodies weren't made for it. It wasn't our time to play. We played anyway. And together we played like there was no tomorrow. And they told us that was fine. You can play. You're good enough. And thought that was good enough for us. It wasn't. We are relentless. The game isn't over until we say it's over. Until we get everything we've given everything for. Until we level the playing field. Lidl, proud supporters of ladies Gaelic football.